Hi folks, Captain Mike here from Salty Cape. We're back at the dock after a great day fishing for giant bluefin tuna at the Regal Sword. It's the middle of August, which means it's prime time for the big boys east of Chatham here on Cape Cod. The spot that we're fishing at, the Regal Sword, has been hot. But you still need to focus on locating the fish, especially if you're using artificials. So we had two strategies today. The first strategy, which makes the most sense for most anglers, is to stick with the life. By life, I mean whales, birds aggressively uh, feeding with the whales, sand eels, lots of life. This is a perfect example of a humpback bubble feed. Look how much life is here. It's a full food chain in motion. You have birds aggressively working, sand eels getting eaten by the ton, tuna, are very much part of this equation and further down in the water column. Now the other method is uh, to do a sort of a search pattern with your fish finder. Uh, what I like to do in that case is idle slowly while staring at my fish finder looking for targets. Uh, today we've been noticing the targets have been hanging down near the bottom even though uh, we have seen some fish surfacing on the top water. So we're fishing with jigs today. So locating the fish is really important as opposed to if you're drifting with say live mackerel, uh, the mackerel can sort of help find the fish for you. But if you're fishing with jigs, this is a little more of a tactical situation than fishing with live bait. So you really wanna make sure you're on top of the fish. So I know from past experience of this summer, there's a mix of sand eels and mackerel here at the Regal. Those sea herring are a common occurrence. There's some good bottom here too, so there's cod, which makes a great plan B, but also the usual bottom fish such as mudhake, pollock, etc. For all those reasons, I think the hoagie harness jig is a great place to start. It has the right size and profile to match any of those aforementioned baits. So the hoagie harness jig is highly imitative. You'll notice a couple of things about this lure. For starters, the airbrushed head and oversized eyes pair perfectly with the color patterns on the hoagie harness jig tails. So that means this bait will look very natural, very realistic if a fish gets a close look at the bait. Now this is very important today because we are slow jigging, which is how I like to fish soft baits for tuna. And that means the tuna are gonna have a good look at this bait before committing. So we want every edge we can get, particularly in a situation if these guys might decide to be a little finicky. For outfits, you want high quality, tough stuff. There are a lot of big fish in the area and I expect some heavy vertical lifting. So I'm gonna err on the side of conventional reels today because I feel I can put more pressure on the fish. I have a mix of Shimano Talica 20s and 25 rigged with 100 pound braided hollow core with 25 feet of 130 pound test fluorocarbon wind on leaders. The Hoagie Harness Jig has a ball bearing swivel molded right inside the head of the lure, making the usual swivel split ring combination unnecessary. This will minimize fish spooking hardware, again, important with the slow pre presentation and high visibility to the fish. I recommend the smallest piece of heat shrink and crimp you can get away with. Again, the less hardware, the better. Take your time to crimp the harness jig on properly. You'll be putting a ton of pressure on that connection. The lure can stop a bus. Make sure your crimp connection can too. So the name of the game with fishing these soft baits is slow. And by slow, I mean really slow. Hip up, slow drop. Tip up, slow drop. Let it out, crank up. If you feel like you've come off the bottom, reel it up a little bit and drop it back down. You'll want to pay attention to where you're marking fish anywhere in the fish finder and focus on that depth. But again, today, the name of the game has been down deep, close to the bottom. Speaking of drops, we find that many of our hits come on the drop with soft baits fishing in this manner. Be vigilant. If you hit bottom before you should hit bottom, crank down on the handle like this. Fish on, fish on. Just like that, just like that. The hooks on the hoagie harness jig are ridiculously sharp and sticky, and the articulated bend on the hook will make sure that fish stays buttoned. 
we've taken the time to carefully connect the lure so I know I can apply massive amounts of pressure with confidence. We're gonna take the time here to break down how to properly fight bluefin tuna like this one. Two things to remember, teamwork and communication are the most important components to this battle. We're going to let the fish run. Meanwhile, my crew is going to clear the deck and stow the rods in a safe position. At this point, I like to have the engines fired up and in the ready position. It's the angler's job to advise how much line is on the reel at this point. If you're on a center console, this is the time where the angler will head to the bow and fight the fish about 15% off the center. Today, we're on a down east style boat, so the angler will stay on the aft corner, whichever side is practical. In either event, the captain will position the boat to accommodate this. Many anglers will be startled by how much line is coming off the reel at this point. If you have your reel set to 12 to 15 pounds of drag, the pressure is immense to the fish, not just you. Let the fish run, it's hands down the fastest way. That fish needs to get tight. Remember, your reel has at least 45 inches of line per crank, so when the fish gets tired, you can pick up line quickly. Once the run is complete, we sometimes idle back towards the fish while the angler puts more line in the reel while maintaining pressure. If you put line back on without idling, do it. The fish will tire more quickly that way. The goal is to get as much line back in the reel without letting the fish rest too much so that it can make another big run and get even more tired. I expect at least five or six good runs at this stage of the fight. Take turns. These fish are very big fish and extremely tiring on this gear. These rods may be considered light tackle as compared to the fish, but they do put a hurting on the angler. I often see people switching out when they get tired, but I recommend switching out before you get tired. That way, every angler on the rod will be in top physical shape and the fish will be getting the maximum amount of pressure throughout the whole battle. Be ready for the fish to swim towards you. If this happens, reel as fast as you can. Sometimes this change in direction can be so aggressive that the captain will assist you by repositioning the boat. As the fish gets closer to the boat, it'll become more vertical. If you're on a center console, I'd advise working the fish aft so you're in a position where the captain can easily step aside to assist. I think the best place to fight a fish is aft on one of the corners. Pick a side that is easiest for the captain to keep the boat downwind of the pitch. This will prevent the boat from drifting over the tuna and potentially breaking it off. Tuna will make big circles that get tighter as the fish gets closer to the boat. Let the fish run a little while it's swimming away from the boat and collect the line as it circles back around. Now is the time to put extra pressure on the fish with a little palm on the reel. This takes some finesse. You want extra pressure, but you don't want to break off the fish. As you make progress, apply a little more palm on the reel as the fish circles away. This will help shorten the diameter of the circles. Keep repeating. Trust your gear, trust your connections, but also know when to ease off. You'll get a sense of this as you do it more often. As the fish gets close, the angler is responsible for advising line position relative to anything bad which includes the fish swimming under the boat, or line hitting trim tabs, swim platforms, engines, whatever. It's the captain's responsibility to listen, watch for him or herself, and be ready to reposition the boat. There are often many boat adjustments needed near the end game to avoid trouble. Usually this only entails driving a circle around a fish and keeping the fish in the most ergonomic position on the aft quarter of the boat. As the fish gets very close to the boat, it will likely freak out a little bit with the last final burst of adrenaline. It will likely rip a little more line out, no problem, just keep working the turns. The more spirals you shorted with your palm, the more you're winning. It's time for the end game. So we have a decision to make here. Are we gonna keep this fish or are we gonna release it? If we were to keep this fish, we'd be considering using a harpoon and or a gaff. In either event, the goal is to gaff or harpoon this fish near its head. If the fish is very large, this is a good opportunity to get a tail rope on the fish to better secure its position alongside the boat. 
But today, we are releasing this fish. It's very tired, and the goal is to get a lip gap on this fish as quickly as possible and get it swimming alongside the boat so we can revive the fish and remove the jig. This fish is very tired, so we're gonna spend the time to properly revive this fish. It can take up to 45 minutes to do this properly, but be patient, the fish will come back to life. Bluefin tuna are federally regulated and the regs change often. So it's a good idea to check the regulations before leaving for each trip. We estimate this fish to be approximately 85 inches, which is far above the current regs of up to 72 inches for recreationally caught bluefin tuna. So as you saw, that fish messed up our soft bait a little bit. Now that I have this lure unrigged, I'd like to take a minute to show you the inside guts of this lure. So you'll notice on this harness jig, there's a heat shrink tubing that goes over the connection of the harness to the hook, hence the name harness jig. Now what's cool about this heat shrink tubing is it creates a semi-stiff rig. So you'll see the hook flexes, so it will allow the angler to put pressure on the fish without too much pressure on the lure. So the hookup ratio will go up quite a bit with this component. So bottom line is this heat shrink connection over the harness rig is a nice compromise between a great hookup ratio and the flexibility inside the lure so you can put unlimited pressure on the fish. So the hoagie harness tail is built for rigging. You'll notice the rigging channel in the front and the rigging exit in the back. The middle of the lure is solid in the new hoagie harness tails. This will minimize slippage with the bait when it's on the jig. So it's about as easy as you get. You aim for the hole and you can feel the passageway. I am now at the solid part of the bait so it requires a little finger strength to get through it. And I exit the hole that's in the back and I'm just gonna slide that bait right up and over the knuckle of the tail. And here you go. You, you might actually get half a dozen fish on the same lure without needing to re-rig. So I'm gonna pull the soft bait back just a little bit, and I'm gonna put a little super glue just inside the head here, as you can see. Now, this is an optional step. The bait will stay on the lure without it. But the good thing about the super glue is it's gonna greatly extend the useful life of the bait. So if you can picture this lure inside a fish's mouth, if this bait's gonna, you know, with the friction of the fish's mouth, its jaws, its fight, the drag, the bait sliding up and down the harness um, is what wears the bait out more than anything. So while I let that glue dry, I'm gonna go back to the exit hole here and just put a little down that channel and I move it around, give it a pinch. Now you're ready to drop this 225 feet of water for your next giant bluefin tuna. Took a while to revive that fish. It was such a great feeling to watch that fish swim away healthy. Hey. What are you talking about, dude? Huh? That was a long time coming for the boys. Woo!